Alright, welcome back. So, uh, by popular demand, we wanted some discussion of uh, the other biogeochemical cycles uh, in addition to carbon and nitrogen. So, I'm going to de emphasize kind of all the little intermediates in these cycles. Not because they're just not important in general, it's just that uh, probably not as commonly tested. Alright? Um, and, you know, the, 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 the yeah, yeah, I think that's it. But, um, so let's start with phosphorus, right? So we got carbon and nitrogen, and all those little intermediates, ins and outs, and where does it go, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll move on to the phosphorus cycle now. Now phosphorus, first of all, is it important because we need it um, for a lot of cellular processes. Probably the more commonly referred to one though would be energy production, ATP. Uh, uh, production which occurs in your mitochondria and your cells. Um, phosphate or phosphorus is an important component in ATP production. It's also uh, needed for uh, DNA regeneration and stuff like that. And it goes through cell cell division. Okay, uh, so phosphorus cycle. Um, some important differences between the phosphorus cycle and the other cycles is there's no atmospheric component. Okay, and part of the reason that's so important is because it doesn't end up going through the atmosphere, um, the cycle involved, or part of the cycle, kind of the external large cycle, is extremely slow because it's reliant on tectonic processes, uh, which yet take millions and millions of years to occur. All right, so. Um, where do we get our phosphate or phosphorus from in the phosphorus cycle? Uh, it comes from rocks, right? So we've got mountains, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And we've got rivers, right? So we're going to have our normal rock weathering, right? right. So in the process of that rock weathering, if there is uh, phosphate containing minerals in those rocks, Right? That phosphorus can then um, go from, let's say, rocks right, to uh, water. And uh, also our soil, right? So uh, phosphorus enters the ecosystem through a really slow erosion process. We have phosphate containing, containing minerals, uh, rainwater, etc., weathering processes erode that rock away. That's how the phosphorus gets into uh, the water in the first place and or into biology. Now, once in the water or the soil, right, we've got our biomass. Right, so plants are really good at taking water soluble nutrients out of the soil. Alright, so uh, the phosphorus from the soil works its way into biomass through assimilation in much the same way as nitrogen does in its uh, various forms, all right? And then from biomass, it can work its way back to the soil through decomposition. All right, and so we kind of got that little mini cycle uh, within the big cycle of uh, phosphorus working its way into biomass, working its way through the food chain, things die, decompose, phosphorus goes back to the soil, which case it goes back into biomass through the plants again and just that whole chain. So phosphorus cycles in that way. Uh, and that's just a little internal cycle uh, that's going on right now. If you look out the window, there's a part of the phosphorus cycle occurring right there. All right? So started in the rocks, that gets eroded through normal weathering processes, it works its way into water, eventually into soil, into biomass, and there's a cycle. Now, um, because we're not returning phosphorus back to the atmosphere, right? It's really difficult for it to go through an kind of external cycle. It's really slow. All right, now, all water, or a lot of water, eventually works its way out of the ocean. All right? Now, once in the ocean, it can enter the food chain there, into biomass, decompose, back into biomass again, and so on. All right? Some of that phosphorus in the ocean, right, goes into biomass, back to the ocean again, all right, uh, goes back into rocks. Now, no, right, a 
takes a long, long time for that phosphorus, once it enters the bedrock again, to get re-exposed to the surface and re-weather, all right? So we often say that there is a net loss of phosphorus to the ocean because essentially once it gets out there, it's no longer usable for us. Um, you know, it might enter the, the biomass there, but in terms of us being able to get that for fertilizer, et cetera, uh, it, it's gone, essentially, and it's going to take millions and millions of years for that rock cycle and interplanetary, interplanetary processes uh, to, to bring that back, okay? Uh, now, one of the things humans have done is we mine. All right, and specifically we mine phosphate-containing uh, minerals so that we can use the phosphorus to kind of speed up this process right here uh, to have a greater access to phosphorus so we can put that in with our, our nitrogen fertilizers off. So we have nit ammonium nitrate is one of the primary components, but we also add some phosphates to that fertilizer because uh, so it's another important uh, limiting nutrient. All right, uh, so again, this is much simpler or, or we're going to look at it at much more of a surface level than the nitrogen and carbon cycle, right? What you have to remember is phosphorus, primary source is rocks, right? There's no atmospheric component. Uh, we've got the assimilation and decomposition process just like in that uh, nitrogen cycle. So it goes in and out of biomass, back to soil, back to biomass, back to soil. You can do the same thing with the ocean, ocean to biomass, biomass back to the ocean. But we do get some loss of that phosphorus to rocks. And once it's in that bedrock, again, essentially useless to us, all right? Until nature brings it up again, long after we are done, okay? 